Hello again, everyone. We will now start learning about the EM algorithm, which stands for Expectation Maximization Algorithm, and that is specially designed for incomplete data problems. The EM algorithm was published in 1977 by Art Dempster, Nancy Lord, and Donald Rubin, in, and they kind of formalized the idea because similar ideas had um, appeared earlier, and without any doubt, the EM algorithm is one of the great success stories of statistics in the um, past 40 years, and here we have the cover of the paper, and the title was Maximum Like from incomplete data via the EM algorithm and we can see maximum likelihood the keywords incomplete data EM algorithm so let us uh, start the EM algorithm is a very general iterative procedure for maximum likelihood estimation in incomplete data problems and in fact the range of problems that can be handled by the EM algorithm is very broad and include problems that they are uh, not uh, genuine incomplete data problems but if we formulate our problem as an incomplete data problem they are easier um, to, to solve because we can use the EM um, algorithm and in fact the algorithm the EM algorithm has been the first choice of most researchers looking for maximum likelihood estimates in models that involve or genuine complete, incomplete data or uh, data that can be stretched, structured as a missing data problem. And just to give you an idea of how popular the EM algorithm is by the time of writing these notes and my um, search on Google Scholar was on um, Wednesday, so on the 21st of October, the number of citations exceeded 60,000. So this is an impressive number for a statistics article. So the EM algorithm is most useful when the observed data uh, likelihood is difficult to maximize, but the complete data likelihood is easier to, to handle. As we have seen uh, in, the, in the last video, where we had a univariate pattern, just two variables, and in fact we uh, add already to do some tricks in order to come up with analytically analytical estimates for the um, from with to come up with analytical estimates for our maximum likelihood uh, estimator and so the way that the em algorithm operates is that uh, it starts with um, an initial value, so it's an iterative procedure, and then we uh, perform within each iteration of our uh, procedure uh, a new step, the expectation step, and a maximization step. And we will look in these two steps in detail in a few slides. And before we go ahead, the basic condition for the EM algorithm to be valid is ignorability, and so we need to assume missing at random data, okay? So let's start with the E step, with the expectation step. As I was just mentioning, uh, the EM is most useful in, in cases where our observed data likelihood is difficult to maximize, but the complete data likelihood is easier to maximize. The problem with the complete data likelihood is that it involves the missing values that we do not have available and so we need to do something and what um, Rubin, Dempster and Lert formalized as I have said the idea was the idea already appeared somehow um, 
long before they publish their paper, but they formalize and what they say is, okay, for the expectation step, I will take my complete data log likelihood and I will, the E step, what it does is it computes the conditional expectation and it's the expectation with respect to the missing values of the complete data log likelihood given the observed data and the estimate of theta from iteration t. This is an iterative procedure, okay? And we denote the estimate of t at iteration, of theta, sorry, uh, the estimate of theta at iteration t by theta uh, to the power of t theta of t, okay? And so basically that's what we have formalized here. So complete data likelihood is our uh, object here. It has missing value, so we do something and what they propose is, okay, it's the expectation step. We calculate the conditional expectation with respect to the missing values of the complete data uh, log likelihood and uh, we condition uh, or we condition, sorry, on the current estimator or estimate, sorry, of theta and uh, on the observed data. And that's exactly what we have here in the first line. Then in the second line is just we we know that uh, the joint density when regarded as a function of the parameter it's the likelihood and here we are working instead of with the likelihood with the joint density and just then to make the bridge to the expectation and here it's just the expectation remember that we are integrating with respect to the missing values given what is observed and the current estimate of the parameter and this is what our integrand and this is comes from the fact that we are integrating with respect to the missing values given what is observed and the current estimate right it's right when we have for instance right we do and this is like the analog in our case so e step it's the trickier step as we will see the m step at least conceptually, is easy. The E step is also uh, easy, at least from a conceptual point of view. What all we need to do is to write down our complete data log likelihood and then compute the expectation with respect to the missing values. We know that our complete data uh, log likelihood, it has some missing values because we are working with missing data problems. And so we compute the expectation with respect to, um, to the missing values and it's conditional on the observed data and on the current estimate of our parameter theta. Okay, and this is the E step. We will do some simple examples in a few slides so we can um, consolidate um, these all of these details, but right now let's uh, proceed to the M step, to the maximization step. And the maximization step, it's just a maximum likelihood step. Usually we do the, we maximize our likelihood, our usual likelihood in case we have no missing values under ignorability. And if we are not working with the EM algorithm, uh, we, as we have seen in the last video and also in the previous week, we maximize the observed data log likelihood. And here, our function that we want to perform maximum, um, that we want to maximize is our Q function. As I forgot to mention here, to this conditional expectation of the, com the log likelihood of the complete data, we denote it uh, by Q of theta given theta t. Theta t is the current estimate. It's a number, okay? Think, think of it. Uh, think uh, of it as a number, okay? So what is free here, our parameter is theta. Then theta t is fixed, it's a constant, it's some number, okay? And then we maximize on the m step, we maximize q that we have obtained in the expectation step with respect to theta, just it. And we know that uh, then 
the our estimate at iteration t plus one it's just the maximum of our the value of theta that maximizes our q function and so it implies that my function q evaluated at theta estimate at iteration t plus one needs to be greater than q of theta given theta t for all values of theta by definition of maximum likelihood estimate okay and so we repeat this is an iterative procedure so we repeat the e and the m steps until some convergence criterion is met so we compute the conditional expectation of the complete data log likelihood given the observed data and the current estimate of our parameter then we maximize that function we obtain the new uh, parameter estimate we then replace that in our expectation we obtain the updated value of our or, or we obtain our updated q function and then given the updated Q function, we maximize it and we perform this iteratively until some criterion, some stopping criterion is met. And one possible criterion, if we are working with um, a scalar with a single parameter, and we have also used this for the numerical methods, there are several of them. This is one possibility, for instance, is to say that the absolute uh value of the this of the difference of two consecutive um iterates is smaller than some pre-specified epsilon and here if i put myself in the most general situation where theta is a vector composed of p components this is the exact translation to the multivariate case is the distance between the estimate at iteration t plus one to the estimate at iteration t to be smaller than epsilon and for instance my distance can be just the sum of the absolute value differences of each of the components okay uh, and yeah that's it as you see the m step it can be more or less difficult depends on the form of the function q but it's just a maximization step nothing more than that the E step it's as the name says an expectation step and conceptually it is not difficult then depending on the problem uh, calculating the expectations it might be more or less um, easier but also from a conceptual point of view there is nothing too difficult on it okay so let's start with um, a toy example okay so suppose that we have and this is very toy and we don't need the em algorithm here but just to make uh, the point and so we can uh, see all of the concepts suppose that we have y1 and y2 and that they are iid from an exponential distribution with parameter theta and suppose that y1 is the observed value of y1 is 5 and y2 is missing okay we also know that the density is given by this right so to start what we need to do first is to do the expectation step and for the expectation step we need to come up with our function q and in order to form our uh, function q we need first quantity is the complete data log likelihood right so here and using the notation that we have been defining uh, what is y observed is just y1 and y missing is y2 okay then i will just use y1 and y2 it's simpler but just to uh, make it um, concrete now the likelihood of the complete data or complete data is y1 and y2 is theta It's the contribution from y1 and the contribution from y2 and sorry y2 we have that
and then the log likelihood of the complete data it's just right now we'll change slide my function q of theta theta t at iteration t is the expectation and the expectation is taken with respect to what is missing in this case is y2 of my complete data log likelihood given what is observed it's y1 and the current estimate at iteration t okay and i know that i have from the previous slide this is just to make sure it's two log of theta i will write by two capital because i will need to take the expectation with respect to that now remember that we are taken the expectation with respect to y2 so everything that uh, does not depend on y2 is regarded as a constant right so in particular two times log of theta does not depend of does not depend on y2 so it's a constant so i can write it outside right and then i have the expectation of minus theta y1 and i'm conditioning on y1 and i know that y1 is five and then i have right and now i have expectation of minus theta sorry minus theta expectation of y2 given y1 and sorry theta t correct now i know that first i know that because y2 follows an, an exponential distribution i know that expected value of y2 is 1 over theta now expected value of y2 given y1 and theta at iteration t i can simplify it's nothing wrong if i just jump to the last step but i want to make the point that knowing y1 does not affect what the value of y2 so i don't need to 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 condition on it okay so this is this and this is one over theta t okay now if i replace in my function q i obtain I think, let me just check if everything is correct. Just one. Sorry, here, obviously it's y1 is five, so it's minus five theta, right? So it's not minus five y1, it's minus five theta. And here, sorry, it's, minus five theta sorry and yes now everything is um, correct now this is a function of theta i have completed the um, e step okay and now i want to proceed to the m step and to the m step i maximize my function q with respect to theta so theta t is a constant okay theta is the variable i want to optimize q as a function q is a function of theta okay and so let me just write the function q here it's 2 log theta minus 5 theta minus theta i think this is what i have yes and now if i take the derivative with respect to theta i want to do the maximization so this is simple this is 2 over theta minus 5 minus 1 over theta t correct and i want to solve this uh, to theta so i will now equate it to zero
sorry, here is also T to T. Then this implies that at iteration t plus one, this is let me just check. Yes. And so this is my updating equation. In this case, this is very simple. I don't need to rederive the E and M step at each iteration of the algorithm. I simply have an updating equation for theta. So I start with some value, say theta zero, and then I start updating this equation. And we will see in the last video of this week how to implement this very simple example in R. And this is just to um, put in practice, although with a very toy example, all the concepts associated with the EM algorithm. Okay? So, I have left some slides in blank in case I need it. Okay, so let's... Um, a good property of the EM algorithm, and remember that we are using the complete data uh, likelihood, but our goal is to maximize the observed data log likelihood or the log likelihood of the observed data. That's what we have. And the EM algorithm, it guarantees that the um, log likelihood of the observed data uh, evaluated at iteration t plus one is greater or equal than the log likelihood evaluation at the um, at iteration t of the algorithm and so the em iterates they always improve the estimate in the sense that each iterate is more likely than the previous one and this is a good property and we need to be aware, and this is a problem of most uh, optimization, be it minimization or maximization uh, algorithms, is that we might converge, in this case that it's maximization, to a local mode. For instance, I can, if I have something of this type, I might converge to this local mode that it's not the global maximum. And so uh, it's always a good practice, especially if we are unsure about the number of modes of our likelihood to start the algorithm in um, our theta zero to start to choose values for theta zero that are uh, very different from each other and see if the algorithm always converge to the same value. Still, it can be converging to the local mode, but we would need to have very bad luck to start with very different initial values and that it would always converge to the local mode. And just uh, to conclude this part, let us prove this result that, in fact, the log likelihood uh, improves from iteration to iteration, okay? So, let us uh, start. What we have is, let's, our object in the um, EM algorithm is the complete data log likelihood, correct? So, let's start with the joint density. So I have the joint density of what is observed and missing given the parameter and using Bayes theorem I can write this as and let me look what is yes it's I can write this way what is missing given what is observed and theta and what is observed given theta. And now, if I write in terms of log likelihood, this part will give me the log likelihood of the complete data. This will be the log likelihood of the observed data, and this will be something. Okay, let's rewrite. So this is the log likelihood when uh, now I will rewrite everything in terms of likelihood. So this is the log likelihood of the complete data. And it's equal to the log, and I will keep here the density. It will be useful later. Plus, right, I'm passing to the logs. And so I can rewrite 
log of minus and now I will take the expectation to with respect to what is missing given what is observed and the current estimate and I'm doing this because I want that the terms in my that appear in my EM algorithm also appear here okay so if I take the expectation but note that the expectation with respect to what is missing of the log likelihood of the complete data because we are taking given what is observed and the current estimate of the parameter because I'm taking the expectation with respect to what is missing and the log likelihood of the observed data just depend on the observed data does not depend on the missing data this is a constant and it's still this right but now I will apply the same expectation to the other two terms and I know that this is expectation of log of L of the log expectation with respect to what is missing of the log likelihood of the complete data minus the expectation to with respect to what is missing of that function Okay, and now I know that, let's see if I don't mess up, this is correct, this term here is our Q function, okay? And I will call this expectation with respect to what is to the missing, with respect to the missing values of log of the density of the missing values conditioning conditional on the observed uh, values and here I've lost something correct just here it needs to be also theta right that's the only thing that uh, it was uh, missing and this I will call it it's what they call in the literature it's h of theta given theta t and now I know that log oops don't want right I know that log the log likelihood of my observed data is equal to my function q from the e step minus that function theta of theta t that we know it's the expectation with respect to what is missing of the log of the density of the missing values given the observed data and the parameter and the expectation is given um, the observed data and the current estimate of the parameter and now because what i want to prove is that the log likelihood of the observed data at iteration t plus one is greater or equal than the log likelihood of the observation of the observed data at iteration t so i will do this is what i want to study the behavior right but this from what i have here it's just q of theta t plus one given theta t minus h of theta t plus 1 given theta t and let me do like this minus q of theta t theta t minus h of theta t theta t okay and if i rearrange this is Mm. q of theta plus one given theta t
And if I'm able to show that the, these two quantities, they are both greater or equal than zero, then I'm able to prove that this difference is greater or equal than zero and that then the result that I want to prove follows that the log likelihood of the observed data always uh, improves. And okay, let's look at these two terms. The first term is the function Q. is this difference. But by definition of theta uh, of theta at iteration t plus one, right? We know that theta of t plus one is the maximum likely is the maximum of and so it implies that Q evaluated at theta two plus one, it will be greater than for all values of theta and in particular for theta t. And so we have that. And so we already know that Q. This is just by the definition. Now I will do the, I will look at the second, I will look now at this term, okay? And I need to remember what H is. So looking at, I know that H of theta given theta T is the expectation with respect to the missing values of the log of F of the missing values given the observed and theta given what is observed and the current estimate. Now, what I will do is that I will prove that H of theta t given theta t minus H of theta theta t is what I want to show greater or equal than zero for Let me just see if I'm not, yes, for all theta and in particular for theta at uh, iteration t plus one, correct? So this is just by replacing, this is the difference of the expectations, right? So this is, and here I'm evaluating at theta t, so here I also need theta t. correct just replacing by the definition and then i know this is the difference of the expectations right can write as sorry and now using the logs, I can still write that this is, I know that log of the recent difference is the, the difference of the logs is the log of the quotient, sorry, the quotient. So this is, let me think. Just playing around with my expression. Just make sure. Mm -hmm. And now I will use Jensen inequality that says that it 
if the function phi is concave and because log is a concave function concave function sorry it's a concave function i can write that this i can jump here and this is uh, So here my phi is the log function of, no longer the log. Okay, and now I, this expectation is exactly so this is minus log of I will just apply the definition of the expectation I'm calculate I was calculating the expectation um, of what is missing with respect to what is observed and the current so current estimate of the parameter and then and this is sorry with respect to this is the integral with respect to what is missing and now this term cancels with this term and this is equal to minus log of And is the integral of this density that we know needs to be one. So this is minus log. And so we arrive at the conclusion that because we had it was greater or equal because of the Jensen inequality, we know that this is for all theta and in particular for theta at iteration t plus one and so we also conclude if we come back that we had already concluded that this was greater or equal than zero and now we have just concluded that this is greater or equal than zero then we conclude that this difference is greater or equal than zero and that the log likelihood of the observed data it uh, improves from iteration to iteration and just to finish this part i had lots of slides in blank in case i need it uh, in um, the original article dempster lord and uh, rubin they have also defined a generalized em algorithm that defers the em algorithm in the e step so for the generalized em algorithm theta at iteration uh, T plus one uh, does not need to globally maximize our Q function, but the minimum requirement is that the Q function evaluated at um, theta at iteration T plus one, uh, given theta T is greater than Q evaluated at the previous iteration. Okay, so we do not look for the maximum, but we need for a value of theta that gives a higher value um, of our Q function and that's it about uh, the concepts or the main concepts of the EM algorithm in the next video we will uh, look at um, two more examples and then we will implement everything in R and in next week we will keep um, studying the EM algorithm but for this video is everything.